Okay, so you've got your ID header tiers in your chat file and you're ready to transcribe. Now there are several ways to do this. One is to use Walker Controller and there are screencasts for that, but probably the most direct and efficient way is to use the F5 transcribe mode. This screencast will show you how to do that. So here's our file, 3.chat. I simply place my cursor on the first line after the media tier and press the F5 function key. But before you press the F5 key, be ready to hit the space bar at the end of every utterance because essentially what we're doing is linking the media file to the transcript so we can go back and listen utterance by utterance to do the transcribing. Now, as you're hitting the space bar and doing the linking, don't worry if you think you messed up. You can always go back and fix it. You can also just click anywhere on the transcript to stop the linking. But just get the basic flow of the turns, at least for about the first 10 or 20 lines or so. Then you can transcribe those and then link some more. You'll find your own method. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Okay, so I'm turning the volume up to make sure that the video is loud enough. And then put my cursor here on the first line and I'm going to press the F5 function key and hit the space bar at the end of every utterance. You'll hear a sound every time I hit the space bar. So here we go. F5. Okay. A lady went shopping and her wallet fell out of her purse um, without her realizing it and when she went to check out she realized she had no wallet so she put the groceries back and went home. And when she got home, the phone rang and a little girl told her that she had found her wallet and the woman was very relieved. Okay, so now we have these bullets at the end of each line, which are the timestamps that link each utterance to the video. Now let me just get rid of this last line here that has no bullet on it. And let me get rid of this blank line here. And then let's expand the bullets to see what's inside. We go up here to Mode, and we can select Expand Bullets right from here, or we can use a keyboard shortcut and type the Escape key followed by the letter A. Both of those actions will also then hide the bullets again. So let's go ahead and select Expand Bullets here. And now we see the milliseconds associated with each utterance, and let's use the Escape a shortcut to hide the bullets. Hit the escape key and then the letter A. All right, so now we're ready to start transcribing. To do that, we place our cursor on the first line we want to transcribe, and then I'll press the F4 key. That will play the line so we can listen to it and then transcribe it. Here goes F4. Okay. Short utterance, she just said okay, so I'll type okay put final punctuation, and then the one other thing we're going to need on each line is the speaker ID. There's a shortcut for doing that as well. If we go up to tiers, we see that the shortcut is already set up. It shows that the participant speaker is associated with the command one shortcut. For PC users, that would be control one. And if we had multiple speakers, they would be listed here and associated with Command 2, Command 3 for the various speakers. This information comes from the participants tier in our header tiers. Now, if for some reason this wasn't already set up, if we didn't see the speaker ID here associated with the shortcut, we would just click Update and it would put all that information in here. Okay, so I go back to my transcription line here and I just hit Command 1 and I get the star PAR colon tab without having to type any of that in. All right, let's go to the next line. I know it's going to be the same speaker because we just have one speaker, so I'll hit Command 1 to get the speaker ID and then I'll hit F4 to hear what she said. A lady went shopping. A lady went shopping, period, next line, command one, 
F4. And her wallet fell out of her purse um, without her realizing it. And her wallet fell out of her purse. And then she said, uh, without her realizing it. Next line, command one. F4. And when she went to check out, she realized she had no wallet. And when she went to check out, she realized she had no wallet. Command one, F4. So she put the groceries back and went home. So she put the groceries back and went home home. Next line, command one, F4. And when she got home, the phone rang. And when she got home, the phone rang. Next line, command one, F4. And a little girl told her that she had found her wallet. And a little girl told her that she had found her wallet. Next line, command one, F4. And the woman was very relieved. And the woman was very relieved. Okay, the next thing to do would be to save this. I can do that with the keys with command S, or I can go up to file, save. And then the next thing to do after that would be to check the file to make sure everything's in the proper format. And to do that, we press the escape key, release it, and then type L, and we get this message at the bottom, success, no errors found. But let me show you what a few errors would look like. So let's say I take away this final punctuation here, and let's say I forgot to put a space before the filler there, and let's say I forgot to put the speaker ID there. So okay, now if I hit escape and then L, it brings the cursor down here and it tells me that a line is supposed to start with an at symbol, a percent, or an asterisk. So I realize I need the speaker ID here, so I'll just hit command one, and now I'll do escape L again and it doesn't like the ampersand in the middle of that word, so I realize I need a space there, and then I hit Escape L again, and it's telling me that I need a period or question mark, exclamation mark, some legal punctuation at the end of this sentence. Now I'll hit Escape L again, and I've got success, so I'm going to save it. So that's really the whole story. I'll add a few comments um, about bulleting and also about some things that you might encounter when you're transcribing, like repetitions, revisions, sound fragments that didn't occur in this sample. But first, bulleting. If you notice that your original bulleting wasn't too good on some of the lines, you can just put your cursor on your last good line and then start the F5 bulleting process over again. The new bullets will replace the old ones, and you can do that for just a few lines or for the remainder of the transcript if you got distracted and messed up. But remember, you can always use F4 to play a given line to see if it's good, and then you can always use Escape A to open and close the bullets to see the numbers and another hint on that is that you can manually adjust the numbers in the bullets to get the start and stop times more accurate. Then a few notes about how to deal with things like repetitions, revisions, and sound fragments. Let's say on the last line she said, and the, the woman was very relieved. So we would type the second the in there, but we would indicate with a square bracket and one slash that the word the was repeated. So when we eventually run the more command and we get a morphological parse underneath the utterance, it won't parse the word the two times. Let's say she said, and the, and the woman was very relieved. 
so it was more than just one word repeated, then we put those words inside angle brackets to indicate that both of them were repeated. Now if she made a revision, let's say she said, and then the woman was very relieved, we would indicate that with two slashes, that those two words were revised. If one word was revised, we don't need the angle brackets. We just need the square brackets with the two slash marks. So for example, if she said, and the lady, but then she changed that to woman, was very relieved, that's how we would mark that. One last thing, if there are sound fragments, so just parts of words or sounds that a person produces, we transcribe those with an ampersand plus. So maybe she said, and the wo woman was very relieved. So those are some of the basics for transcribing with F5.